Hi, welcome to the part 16 of this video series. We are looking at real certification questions for AWS Solution Architect Associate. This is the part 16 of this playlist. Today, in this part, we will look at some of the questions which are linked with Elastic Beanstalk, with RDS Multi AC Deployment, Redshift Spectrum, and Glue Catalog. Let's jump into the questions. Before that, please hit the subscribe button. It takes a lot of effort to put on such contents. There are two playlists, this one and one previous one. Those questions are still relevant apart from this playlist. This playlist has some of the latest questions, but the previous playlist also should be visited because those questions are relevant and it will give you good practice. Please pause the video here if you have want to read this question carefully. So you have an EC2 instance and on this EC2 instance, this yellow box, you are running an ASP.NET MVC application. Now what happens is during lunch hours, people are seeing that there is a spike in the application usage due to which spike means a lot of people like earlier if the application was uh, getting 100 users, concurrent users during lunch hours, now they are getting 5000. That is the problem. And because of that, users are experiencing poor response times. See, you have to address this problem, but you have to do it with least amount of settings. Now, if you see these options, options A and D are talking about Elastic Beanstalk and option B and C are talking about Elastic Container Service. So what is the difference? See, Elastic Beanstalk, why it is used? Because it makes lives easy for developers to quickly deploy and manage applications on AWS Cloud. Okay, It will automatically handle See, the beauty is it will automatically handle capacity provisioning, load balancing, auto scaling. So what is our question saying? Our question wants this no? because users are experiencing poor responses. Then you need something which will automatically adjust itself. So that's why Beanstalk is a solution and ECS is not. See, ECS has a very different use. It is used to create microservice style applications and uh, it works very well for DevOps test and so on. But it is not going to automatically scale up, scale down. Now, ECS can be put on multiple AZs to automatically scale up and uh, scale your web applications, performance, and etc. But what is the difference? The difference here is it is saying least amount of setting possible. So, with least amount of setting, Beanstalk comes over ECS. Even in ECS, you can do it, but Beanstalk has an edge because with least amount of setting, you can do it. Now, we clearly know B and C are not the answers because we are ruling out ECS. Now, out of A and D, which one is correct? A is correct because A is talking about using load-based auto-scaling and time-based scaling to handle the during lunch hour scaling. But D is saying load-based auto-scaling, that is fine. That is exactly the same as this one, A. But next, it says use Lambda function to handle scaling during lunch hours. It is not required. Beanstalk has time based scaling feature. See this documentation, and this one will be very clear. It can scale, uh, scale up and down using time based approach. See, previously we were able to trigger based on user defined triggers, such as if the CPU utilization goes low or the bandwidth usage is low or high. If CPU utilization goes high, that means there are a lot of people accessing it, and that time we should auto scale. But now you can also do it based on user defined time so that at particular time you know during lunch time uh, during lunch time facebook gets lot of access during lunch time instagram gets lot of views so that is the right time or youtube gets lot of views so that is the time when you should scale up that is possible hence uh, this d is wrong because we already have already have a feature this feature in elastic beanstalk so this is the right answer and I have established why. Please pause this video here and read it carefully. See, there is already an on-premises application and you want to migrate this to cloud, AWS, okay? So you want to move this to cloud and there are two components. One is the application and the other is the SQL Server database. Now, they have clearly mentioned you cannot use another engine. You cannot use another engine because .NET is compatible with SQL Server functionality only. But is the option suggesting any of these options, all the four options, they are only suggesting SQL Server only. They are not suggesting any other database. So this cannot be used to identify of the right answer. 
Now the company's goal is to maximize availability while decreasing operational and administration costs. See, if that is the case, that helps me rule out one option. That is option A. It is saying install SQL Server on EC2. If you do that on EC2, then you will not decrease the operational cost. You will increase the operational cost and administration cost because now you have to install the database on EC2. You have to maintain it. You have to apply the patches and so on. So that's why A is totally wrong. Now we are sure it has to be one of B, C and D. But the problem is all B, C and D are using, making use of RDS, RDS, RDS. So how to differentiate now? See, one thing now comes the usage of our thumb rule. Whenever, whenever you see maximize availability, the first option you should do is use multi-AC deployments for high availability. You can pause this video and read this section. So we have established that B is the right answer. Now multi-AZ replicas, what it will do is, it will, it will create read replicas. Now read replica is a solution. If you, know, you have an application which is reading and writing and the reads are becoming slow, then you split the functionality and you can create read replicas. This is not a multi or this is not an availability solution. This is a performance management solution. Hence C is wrong. Now let's talk about D. D is talking about you do a cross region multi ag deployment why would you go to another region the first thing you have to do is first use your own region and do a multi ag there then you go to another region so this is not your first option this is your secondary option that's why i would say d is wrong in this context because i want to first use my first option that is multi ag deployment this is the final answer let's move to this question please pause this video read it carefully See, you already have a Redshift database. So this is your database. Then you have some files on S3. Now you have to use it. The question is saying how you can efficiently merge, efficiently merge the data and visualize the findings. So thumb rule, thumb rule. Whenever you see visualize, what do you think in the AWS world? We think of QuickSight. QuickSight is that software which will help you visualize that. So you can create such cool dashboards. It is similar to Cognos, ClickView, Tableau, MicroStrategy, and so on, Pentaho. So we now know that our answer should have QuickSight, should have QuickSight. And you, you see this QuickSight. Now, C doesn't have QuickSight. So C is wrong. And D, does D have QuickSight? D doesn't have QuickSight, but it is using Kibana. Now, what is Kibana? Kibana is again a data visualization and exploration tool. So we cannot rule this out. What does it do? It gives you interactive charts and easily accessible dashboards. So we cannot rule this out. So out of A, B and D, we have to now identify which one is the right answer. Let's go ahead. See, always remember, let's look at option D first. What option D is saying is you export the data from Redshift into a Parquet file and put it in S3 and then use Elasticsearch to query the data and then use Kibana to view the data. Okay. See, Redshift already has an option called Redshift Spectrum. And the main purpose of this is so that you don't have to again and again migrate the data to Redshift Spectrum. On the fly, you can join the data from Redshift Spectrum with your files on S3 as if S3 file is in the database itself. It will look like that. And you can fire select queries. Remember, Spectrum has additional charges. So if all, I already have this feature in Redshift, then why will I go and, you know, do, it is not an efficient merge, right? The question is saying you do an efficient merge. Now, if I take the Redshift data into Parquet and then put that on Elasticsearch service and then query that using Kibana. So there are three or four steps. Now let's look at B. B says you use Athena to query the data in S3, then use QuickSight to join the data from Athena and Redshift to build visualizations. Not an efficient way. This is not an efficient way. The efficient way is use directly use Spectrum to query the data in S3 and join the data, and then you use QuickSight to build the visualization. This is the most efficient way. Another thing I'll tell you: always, even if nobody says cost cheap solution is required, as an architect, you should always give cheap solution. So D is not cheap because you will be using Redshift cluster, 
then you will be using Elasticsearch, then you will be using Kibana. Elasticsearch and Kibana are way too expensive compared to QuickSight. QuickSight is dirt cheap. So A is the final answer. Please pause this video and read the question carefully. See, there is a company. The company has 200 GB of data on S3. Every month and no, they will run some calculation to calculate the total uh, things sold in each area during the month. So forget about what they are calculating. Just imagine you have 200 GB of data. Some big shot needs some sort of aggregated data, which you have to provide him. Simple. What sales, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. Now, out of these four options, as an architect, what will you recommend? Okay. The first one says Elasticsearch cluster. Okay. You create a cluster. Then query the data in Elasticsearch and visualize using Kiban. Okay. Is this cost effective? The question is saying most cost effective. This is a very miser client. They do not want to pay money. So, which is more cost effective? This is not for sure. Now, B B says AWS Glue Catalog. This is cost effective. Then it says use Amazon Athena, which is cost effective. QuickSight, cost effective. All three. QuickSight is dirt cheap. Okay. Glue Catalog is also cheap. Now, the advantage we also get with Glue Catalog is when we are creating a catalog, it will also bring in some governance to the data. Like uh, whenever you talk about data governance, nowadays a lot of companies are talking about data governance. This also has this advantage that by default the governance is built in so that you always report the correct sort of aggregated data to the uh, top shots so b looks correct c it says uh, use emr cluster emr cluster is mercedes benz the client only has money to buy maruti alto okay you are suggesting him to buy mercedes benz c is wrong totally i will not even discuss further now d says use amazon redshift cluster which is again bmw if not mercedes benz okay if you why would you create this cluster load the data in redshift and then visualize in quick sight you can directly visualize you put glue into play you plug amazon athena and do it this is the most cheapest solution so summarize d is bmw c is mercedes and a is toyota corolla b is even tata nano so here you need Tata Nano, most cost effective solution. So this is the final answer. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button. A lot of analysis goes in to produce these accurate contents. Please remember, we are all about real certification questions, but do not mark the answers, understand the concepts. Only that way you can navigate through. This brings us to the end of part 16. Please remember there will be more parts coming in this playlist. There is one old playlist also for Solution Architect Associate that is still relevant. Please use that playlist as well as this playlist so that you can get maximum practice. This brings us to the end of this part. See you in the next part.